love Jesus, make some crazy noise. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you love Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I won't delay because I have a plethora of scriptures that I want to read through more than my normal allotment, but there's no way I can preach this message without really taking you through the word of God. So we've got a little reading to do, but I promise you, you're going to be blessed today. Today I want to preach from the perspective, I'm disappointed, but I'm still determined. Mm, I got, listen, I've got to control my happiness because I'm ready. I'm ready to get excited. Do me a favor, just look at somebody. I don't care if they won't look at you. You look at them and say, excuse me, Dougie Fresh. I'm disappointed, but I'm still determined. Let's go, let's go, let's go to the word of God. Amen. I believe y'all ready for a word today. Before I get into my scriptures, let me set up the story by introducing you before we read about them, the main characters for today. The main characters for today starts with a gentleman by the name of Jacob. Say Jacob. Jacob. I labeled Jacob as a man who knows what he wants. And this is going to preach to every man, woman, boy, and girl. How many of you can just go ahead and kind of just throw your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care, if you are a man or a woman or a youthful person who knows what they want? Oh, do I have a word for you today. Amen. Put your hand down. Next in this particular word today is a gentleman I'd like to introduce to you by the name of Laban. Laban is the father of two daughters. Somebody say two daughters. Then in this particular story, there are other characters, one who is really the star, and her name is Leah. Somebody say Leah. Leah. Not a Leah, <laughs> not one in a million, but Leah, L-E-A-H. Thank you for putting that on the screen. She is the daughter with a disgusting defect. This is going to preach to somebody today. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, they say that she has a eye disease, which is the inflammation of the eye and infection of her eyes. The Bible says she has weak eyes. In other words, when you see this woman, her eyes kind of look like these pictures. Her eyes are droopy and dragging, and there are other cases that the eyes fill with pus. And no matter how many times you wipe the pus away, more pus oozes out of the eyes of the person that has this particular disease. Her condition made her unattractive, made her unsexy, made her undesirable, and it made her hard to look at. Somebody say, God bless Leah. God bless Leah. Leah has a sister, and this sister's name is Rachel. Now, Rachel is the exact opposite of Leah. The Bible said, and don't get mad with me, but I quote the Bible. The Bible said that Rachel was beautiful in form and beautiful in appearance. And you're going to read that in a few minutes. What does that mean, Pastor? She was fine. The Bible said that Rachel was a dime piece. I wish I had a church. Amen, somebody. The Bible said that Rachel was 24, 36. Let me leave it alone. Amen, somebody. The, the Bible said that she was, the Bible said, come on, she was beautiful. Okay, what is form? Come on, come on, don't, don't get so spiritual. What, what is form? Oh, come on now, you know, you know what form is. Come on, it's the, it's the shape of a thing. Now the Bible said the girl was banging, amen, somebody? The Bible said that when you saw this woman, even when you were married, the men all paused when she walked into the room. That's what the Bible said, amen, somebody? What I also like about this chick, at least at the beginning of the story, is that she has a phenomenal, interesting job that only men typically have in the Bible. She's also a shepherdess. You go and read this story. She's one of the few women in the Bible that we hear is a shepherdess, a female shepherd woman who leads the sheep out into the field to be fed and leads the sheep, amen, and protects the sheep. So she's kind of what you would call a superwoman. So now we go to Genesis 29 because I've laid the characters out for you. And I just want us to read 29, 16 through 20. You guys ready to do some reading today? I promise you, if you take this journey with me, you're going to be blessed. Let's read. One, two, ready, read. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form. Told you I didn't make it up. Jacob loved Rachel, and so he said, peep this, I will serve you as a hired workman for several years in return for the privilege of marrying Rachel, your younger daughter. 19, Laban said, 
it is better that I give her in marriage to you than give her to another man. Stay and work with me. So Jacob served Laban seven years for the right to marry Rachel. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. I got to pause for a few minutes and I can't stay here long. But have you ever been in love with somebody and it seems like they defy the laws of time? You ever been in love with somebody and you can talk with them forever and ever and ever and ever? Hey Amen. You're on the phone all night, falling asleep. You hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Why? Because love has a way of altering your ability to realize what time it is. Well, this brother was so in love with this fine, beautiful woman that he tells her father, I want her so bad that I'm willing to work for her seven years. Now listen, that's a long time to work for a woman. So I know she had to be super bad. Hello somebody. I know she had to be some kind of woman. Number one, to make a man want to work. Huh. Some of y'all ain't that fine because your man does not want to work. Hey man, somebody. I'm sorry, but hey, he don't want to work. So, <laughs> hello somebody. But not only does he want to work on it. He wants to work seven. What kind of woman was this? He says, I'm willing to work seven years. Then the Bible just messes with all. The Bible says, man, he was so in love, it didn't seem but like a little bit of time. Let's read verse 21. It says, finally Jacob said to Laban after seven years now, give me my wife for my time of service is complete so that I may take her to me as my wife. Peep this. So Laban gathered together all the men of the place and prepared a wedding feast with wine. Watch out for the wine. Watch out for the wine. I'm going to say it again. Watch out for the wine. You'll know what I mean in a few minutes. Verse 23. But in the evening, he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob went in to consummate his marriage with her. Okay, I know it's 2016, so let me break it down for you. Consummate his marriage means, in the background, he had Marvin Gaye playing on the iPod. His song of selection was, let's get it on, let's get it on. Okay, y'all don't feel it, brother. When that song ran out, he switched over to Ara Kelly. And his song of selection was, I don't see nothing wrong with a little prayer time. See, y'all thought I was going to say the other thing. Y'all thought I was going to say the other thing. I can't do that in church. And the Bible says they consummated. 21st century language means they got to know each other intimately. Don't make me go any further than that. Amen, somebody? But do you remember the wine that his father, the father of the bride, made sure there was plenty to drink before he went in to consummate his union with the woman? Don't miss this. With the woman he worked seven years for. Verse 25. Watch this. But in the morning, hmm, after the wine done wore off, In the morning, after he sobered up, and maybe I got 50 real people who will step out in the realm of transparency and recall a time or two where maybe you or I, we won't say which, went to a club, went to a party, went somewhere, had a good time, and we was drinking while we were there. Cavassier, Hennessy. Jack Daniels is quiet in the church now. And when you first got there, you didn't see nobody you was interested in. <laughs> I'm going to find a real church in about five minutes. But the more you drunk, you drink, you drink. Hello, somebody. The more you danced and party, people started looking better. Jamie Foxx said, blame it on the alcohol. Hello, somebody. And you find yourself leaving the party with somebody 
who you really didn't know much about, really didn't know much about, really didn't get a good look at them because you drunk and she drunk and everybody drunk and you took it to the house or you went to the hotel, motel, holiday inn. I'm trying, brother. And everything was wonderful until the morning time. I got a real church today. And you woke up and you rolled over. Lord, I don't even want to do this because I'm going to have a flashback, but I got, to, I got to roll over. I got to roll. You roll. Ow, oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. And you don't realize you went to bed with Magilla the Gorilla. Hello, somebody. Blame it on the alcohol. This is what woo, Jacob had to experience. Because in the darkness of the tent, he thought he had, watch this, what he wanted. He thought he had Rachel, the one that he had worked for, but in the darkness of the tent, he had consummated with something that he had no interest in. The Bible says in the morning when Jacob awoke, it was Leah who was with him. And I wish I had time to exegete that exclamation point, but I don't. And he said to Laban, the father, now his father-in-law, what in the, no, he said, what is, <laughs> he said, he said, he said, what is this that you have done to me, man? Did I not work for you for seven years for Rachel, the beautiful one, the fine one? Why have you deceived me and betrayed me like this? But Laban, Laban only said, watch this fool. Is it not the tradition here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older? I would have followed up with, is it not tradition here to tell me that seven years ago? Hello, somebody. Is it not tradition to tell me that you're going to do a little swap out on my brother while he getting a drinky drink on? Isn't it tradition that I bust you in your forehead right now? Okay, I know y'all been saved your whole life. If I can be honest, this is a moment to be upset. Because you are legally married and tied to somebody that you wasn't even looking at, wasn't thinking about, didn't want, but now you got something you never intended to have. There's a lot of folks sitting here today got something you never intended to have. You winded up with something that you never really intended to have and you're married to that thing now. And you feel like you've been deceived. I'm preaching good. You feel like life played a bad trick on you. And you're a little bit upset with life because you haven't gotten what you wanted. But I must admit I love Jacob's determination. Because he's so in love with Rachel. This man does the unthinkable. He says to Laban, and I'll paraphrase and fast forward through some of the scripture. He says, okay, you got me. You got me, man. You got me, bro. You got me. But Rachel is so fine that I'm willing. I'm willing to work seven more years. When I get to heaven, after I see Jesus, the second person I want to see, bring out Rachel. I got to see Rachel for myself. Because I need to know what kind of woman make a man want to work 14 years just to be married to her. She had to be some kind of woman. The Bible says that he held on to the one he didn't want. Because he's an honorable man. Don't miss that. Worked seven more years to get the one that he did want. And after 14 years, he's got everything. Peep this. He got Rachel right after he married Leah. He had her while he was working the additional seven years. Most novices, when they teach this passage of scripture... They tell you he worked 14 years before he got Rachel. Read the text. That's not what happened in the Bible. You ought to be glad you go to a Bible teaching church. Okay, some of you are a little slow. I used to be slow too. Watch this. The Bible says this. He finished the week of the wedding feast for Leah. Then he said, I will give you Rachel also. And then you can work for me seven more years. 
So he didn't have to wait 14 years to get her. He just had to wait seven more years, watch this, to keep his word. See, sometimes you get in trouble because you say you're willing to do something to get something, but when you get it, you ain't willing to keep your word. I respect this cat because once I got Rachel, let me tell you what Pastor Troy would have did. Once I got Rachel that day after I had been tripped and tricked, amen, I would have waited tonight and me and Rachel going to sneak off and we leaving Leah with her daddy. Hello, somebody. Okay, I don't have a real church. If I got any brother say amen and you with me, say amen, Pastor. Would have left her. She would have never known what happened. Matter of fact, I'd have asked for a little more wine. Can we get some extra wine tonight? Drink up, Leah. Drink up, Leah. You want something to smoke? Smoke, Leah. Yeah, Leah, I want you to get high and happy tonight. Because when you wake up in the morning, I'm gone. Hello, somebody. Jacob didn't do that. Jacob, watch this. I'm preaching on so many levels. Jacob stayed with Leah, the one he didn't want, the one with the droopy eyes, the daughter with the defect, and he stayed with Rachel. And you say, well, Pastor Jacob should get a standing ovation. Not so fast. Not so fast because he stayed with her, but he didn't treat her right. Oh, how many people? Or married in this room, but you're not treating your husband or your wife right. It's quiet in here now. You know it's quiet when you get an air conditioned breathing. Amen, somebody? Yeah, see, what he did, he gave her father one picture. But behind closed doors, the Bible tells me that she wound up feeling unloved. What verse is that in, Pastor? Verse 31. Read it with me. Now when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he made her able to bear children, but Rachel... Stop, 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 stop. Leah, come here for a minute. Come here, Leah. Come here. Look at she's so happy. Ugly people always got more energy than the rest of us. Say, hello, Leah. This is Leah. Come here, Pastor Tish. Look at Rachel. Bone chicka, wow, wow. Bone chicka, wow, wow, wow. When Pastor Tish walk, I hear music playing. Bone chicka, wow, wow. Somebody say, hello, Rachel. Hello, Leah. Why don't you get a look at these two? This is the one he wanted. This is the one he got stuck with. I'm preaching now. This is the one that has the droopy eye. And I didn't want to mess up the girl's face and mess up the girl's eye. So the mask represents droopy eyes. Okay, the mask represents unattractive. The, the mask represents not my first choice. Even if I'm drunk, I, I don't want this. But I've got this, I'm preaching and I've got this. And I put forth the image, watch this, that I'm going to do them both right. But behind closed doors, I mistreat this one while I romance this one. Oh, we having a good time over here. Looking in my eyes, you in love, you got the man of your life, dreams. I got the woman of my dreams. And in the background... There's Leah. Don't y'all feel sorry for her. Peep this. And everywhere me and Rachel go, love you. You're the one I want. I'm not talking to you. Love you. You. I love you. You the one I wanted, and I wish to God. <laughs> and you know what? There are a lot of Leas here today. I'm 
preaching, y'all. There's a lot of leaders that are in a situation and in a relationship where you long for love. You long for attention. Matter of fact, you are the rightful person to receive it. But because you have a defect, you are undesirable. But I have a message for you today. I believe she always wanted to be married. But I also believe she never thought it was going to happen. Let's face it, she's the oldest daughter and nobody's come to court her. So much so that her daddy realizes this girl ain't going to never find nobody. And the only way I'm going to get her somebody is I got to trick somebody. But I stop by to tell you that sometimes even God is in the middle of the enemy's tricks. <laughs> Wait, you, you're clapping, but you didn't, you didn't hear what I said. Sometimes the enemy thinks he's tricking us. And God is the mastermind behind all the tricks. How much so? Because the one that he loved, Rachel, she fine, but she can't have no babies. Okay, you don't, that, and I know that don't, that don't excite some of y'all. Some of y'all would be happy. But in the Bible days, every man in the Bible wanted to reproduce of his own kind. Every man in the Bible wanted more than anything to have a son. And he assumed, don't miss this, brothers, he assumed because she's fine, surely she's fruitful. Good God Almighty, I'm preaching. Let me share with you that just because something is pretty don't mean it's perfect. I wish I had a church. Just because something is fine don't mean it's fruitful. Some of you got something that looked good on the outside, but it was empty on the inside. So much so that whatever he put in Rachel, it did not produce anything that brings about life. Bible says when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, unloved, not just unliked, but unloved, means he didn't hug her, he didn't date her, he didn't kiss her, he didn't talk with her. Once he got this one, he ignored this one. But you better understand, God expects for you to always keep your vows to that which you vowed to first. I'm preaching in here today. Even if it's ugly, you better treat it right. And do you know what God did? God said, okay, Jacob, you want to play games? I want to play too. I'm not going to let the one that you love give birth, but the one that you don't love going to have the power to have a baby. Okay, peep this. I, I, got, a, I, got, I got news for y'all. Listen, listen, do me a favor. Uh, come, come go with me. Uh, she and I need to talk. You just stay right here. No, no, see, you got the wrong spirit. You got the wrong spirit. See, that's what happens. You get a, you get a chance to be with the man and you want to just show up. Be humble, Leah. Be humble now. She and I need to talk. We, we need to go talk about some business. We're back. Uh, why don't you prepare a dinner or something or just sit and watch TV. Go get your nails done. Uh, matter of fact, we, we're probably going to be going for a little while because I got a lot I want to talk to her about. Uh, matter of fact, I probably won't be back until in the morning. But, uh, Leah. See, when you ain't used to getting no attention, you don't know how to act. You don't know how to act. Come on. So we'll be back. I'll see you in the morning. I need to talk with this one. So we go off and we talk. Yep, and we talking, and we talking. Nine o'clock, we talking. P.M. Ten o'clock, we talking. It's midnight, we still talking. I sure hope you know talking is a metaphor for something else. And we talking, and we talking, and we talking, and I come back home. Hey, Rachel. Girl, so good to see you. Man, I'm tired. Woo. <laughs> tired, so good. So good. All that talking. Yeah, it was a lot of talking. A lot of talking. A lot of talking. You been doing all right? Good, good, good. Uh, say what? You, you want to know where, 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 where is Leah? Uh, uh, she coming. She coming. She was, 
She was right behind me. She was right behind me. Matter of fact, fast forward nine months later. Nine months later, she coming to the house, and uh, something, something, something ain't right. Leo, hey, oh, <laughs> wow. slow this is not a book bag uh, the Bible said that Leah was unloved uh, then the Bible said God made her able to bear children then the Bible goes on to say in verse 32 Leah conceived okay that means she got pregnant that means she <laughs> and Jacob uh, were playing patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. But don't miss this. The Bible said, don't you take my message. I feel you, baby. You with me? That she was unloved. How you get pregnant by somebody that don't love you? Don't clap. Because it's painful right now. How you wind up having babies by somebody who doesn't love you? You know how it happens? You become thirsty and desperate for their affection. And you'll take anything you can get. Even if they won't give you love, at least they'll give you sex. You can't clap here because it's real personal now. And the Bible says... Please, Lord Jesus. She gave birth. Uh. This is what the Bible said now. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, verse 32, the Bible says she gave birth to a son and named him Reuben. Like the sandwich, because he was delicious. Hello, somebody. Reuben means see. A son. That's what the, the word name Reuben means. See, look, I got a son. But listen, she wasn't doing this to her husband. She was saying, see, a son to Rachel. <laughs> Leah, Leah, stay humble. Stay humble. Now, some of y'all might think, okay, y'all might think, okay, Leah is just wrong. She's wrong for doing what she's doing. But you don't know the years of abuse that she suffered from the mouth of the beautiful one. I wish I had a church. You don't know the years of abuse she suffered at the mouth of her father or at the mouth of every man that looked at her and said, we don't want you. We'd rather have your sister. And the Bible says, listen, I'm going to bless you when everybody else overlooked you. The Bible says she had a son and she said, because the Lord has seen my, don't miss this, humiliation and suffering and here's her hope. Now my husband will love me since I have given him a son. Now even though she's the one with the defect, she gives Jacob something that he wants. And the Bible tells me in so many words, he starts spending more time with droopy eyes than he does with Sister Fine. I wish I had a church. And some of you women going to wake up one day and realize it ain't all about what's on the outside. It's about what God can give you the ability to do from the inside. Oh, God. Yeah, you can do all the squats you want. That don't mean you're going to get a husband. Everybody squat now. I see you. I see you. I see you. Everybody squat now. Keep on squatting. Some of you take the shortcut and you go see the doctor. And you let him pump, 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 pump you up. You build up the outside. There ain't nothing worse than a pretty woman. And that's all she has. I know you're here today. Yeah, your hair is on point. Your makeup is on fleek. You pretty as can be. 
But when somebody talks to you, it's like talking to a bag of nails. When somebody has dialogue with you, you, don't have, you can't have a decent conversation. It's quiet in here now. But Pastor, in that, in that, in that, in that, what men want? Let me tell you something. That's what boys want. Boys want a body. Men want somebody. Hello, somebody. Somebody with a mind. Somebody with conversation. Somebody with some abilities to give me the things in life that I desire. Keep on being just fine. Quiet now. All the pretty women don't want to say nothing. That's all right. I got some sisters to say. Pastor, you preaching today. Bible says she gave him one son. And somehow he started spending more time with her. Look at she just opening up the womb. Y'all saw. See, 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 see. Here, here, I got more for you. Jacob. And the Bible says in verse 33, she conceived again and gave birth to another son. <laughs> this is going to have to be part two because we're just going to roll with it. Amen, somebody? Conceived again and gave birth to a second son and she said, because the Lord has heard that I am unloved. She was still unloved might I suggest to you that giving a man a baby won't make him love you? I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church in here today. Some of you silly women, and I'm calling you silly because I love you. Silly women think, but if I give him a baby, he going to love me. It's quiet in here now. And you gave him seven babies. And he still don't love you. The Lord has heard me. He's given me this son also. So she named this son Simeon. Which means God hears. Spending more time with droopy eyes, less time with pretty women. They spend more time together. What else you got? You know, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how easy your bag come open. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned because you, you just, you got quick release and everything. Uh, the Bible says she conceived. This can't be right. She conceived again and gave birth to a, another son? What the hell? Wait a minute, what's going on? I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to roll with it because I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I'm productive. I'm happy I got sons. I got three sons now. And she says the third time, now this time my husband <laughs> will become attached to me as a come. Companion. What was he prior? He wasn't attached as a companion. He was attached as a sex partner. Because she's able to give him something that she can't give him. You better look in the mirror because I'm preaching to somebody today. For now I've given him three sons. And I shall name this son. Anybody read your Bible, you should catch on to what's happening. Then the Bible says... This can't be right. She conceived again and gave birth to a. Oh, you want to slow it down now? I got you. A fourth son. <laughs> and says, Now I will praise the Lord. So she named him. Judah. For the time then she stopped giving birth to children. Those of you that don't study your Bible, you may not have caught on to the fact that God is blessing the ugly one. I'm, about, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And I got folks in this room, you've been disappointed because you've been looked over. You've been used and abused. You're the last chosen. You're the last desired. Nobody's paying you any attention right now. And it seems like everybody else is the one that everybody's getting attention and getting promotion and getting jobs and finding husbands and finding careers. And you're standing all by yourself with a defect that everybody sees as desirable. 
but I want you to know if you can be disappointed but still be determined. God will make everything work together for your good. He'll also make what the enemy meant for evil to work for your good. But the question is, can you endure being mistreated so that God has a reason to bless your life? If you go back and study the names of the four boys that she gave birth to, these are four men who become the leaders of the 12 tribes. Oh, I wish I had somebody love the Bible. The 12 tribes of Judah each have a leader who leads thousands of people. And God gives her the privilege of being the mother of the first four. What is your point, Pastor? Understand this, she couldn't have a baby until she went through a burden that gave her the opportunity for God to show her favor. Quit complaining about being treated wrong. Quit complaining about being overlooked. Quit complaining about being ugly, about being undesirable, and say, Lord, have your way in my life. Because oftentimes, he will use the same sister that mistreated you to be the cause for God to bless you. You better praise God if you hear me today. I'm preaching to somebody right now that's in an ugly situation, living an ugly life, things ain't working right, and you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. You're about to get pregnant, baby. Now some of you didn't clap because you think I'm talking about physically. No. You're about to get pregnant with dreams. Pregnant with spiritual birth. You're about to get pregnant and give birth to some things that all the pretty folks couldn't do. You're going to be able to do some things that folks with money couldn't do. I wish I had a church in here today. Sometimes you think it's about who you know. Quit trying to get in good with man and get in good with God. And God will open doors. Hello, somebody. God will open doors in your ugly life. And you'll start producing stuff. And all your haters go try to figure out, how'd you get that job? How'd you get that promotion? How did you get to speak at the awakening? Well, let me tell you what God does. If you can endure being overlooked, talked about, mistreated, Call ugly because you don't fit the world's criteria of what pretty looks like. Some of you don't fit the criteria of what it means to be desirable. But God don't care nothing about that. God will put you in position. Please let the church explode with revelation when I say this. God will put you in position with somebody who needs what you have. Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. I might not have a pretty face. Amen, somebody. I might not have college credentials. I might not have gone to seminary. But God puts you in connection with somebody that needs the word that you got, the wisdom that you got, the love that you got, the joy that you got. I'd rather be ugly and fruitful than to be pretty and barren. Wow, Jesus Christ. Do you hear me today? Who am I preaching to today? Then stand up and give God praise if you hear me today. Oh God. 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 Oh my God. Do I have anybody that's disappointed right now? Let's be honest, you're disappointed right now. Your money ain't where you thought it was going to be. Your relationship ain't where you thought it was going to be. Your kids are not the kind of kids you thought you were going to have. The job you go to is an utter disappointment that you have to spend 8, 10, 12 hours with idiots. With silly people. With people who don't like you for no good reason. People who try every day to make sure you have a bad day. And every day you get up to go to work, it's a disappointment that this is where I landed. 
After all the years I went to school, after everything I know, this is the kind of marriage I got. After all the money I spent on my way, these are the kind of kids I got. After I broke my back to put Nikes on their feet and put food on the table, these are the kind of kids I got. Somebody say life can be full of disappointments. Peep this. Leah was disappointed for a long time. While Rachel was the apple of everybody's eye. But I love when God says one word. Switch. <laughs> I love when God says one word, coach. He says, switch. What you mean, pastor? God saying, I'm going to let you switch places. You're going to go from the bottom to the top, and everything on the top ends up on the bottom. You got any word for that? The Bible says the first shall be last, and the last. Okay, this ain't for y'all that's at the top. This ain't for you that got a bank full of money. This ain't for you that everybody loves and everybody likes. This is for my underdogs who have been on the bottom so long, you think you're never coming up. God told me to tell you, you can be disappointed. But don't you ever lose your determination. Give God praise. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Come on. I don't want your praise. Give God praise. 